Uh, good morning and welcome to the uh, the workshop. Uh, amongst the uh, many items in for repair is um, this uh, Eve Electro voice, given its full uh, name, uh, Evolve 50M bass bin and satellite speaker. I don't know what these speakers, they sound <laughs> pretty crap to be honest with you. There's plenty of bottom, top end, but nothing in the middle, unlike myself. Anyway, the, uh, I bet this is about the third one of these I've had uh, in for repair. And the symptom of this one is, with the other two, is a uh, no or intermittent uh, output. It's nothing at all, or it's, uh, it just comes and goes as it pleases. So I've had this problem, you know, so a couple of times before, and I'm going to apply the same method of repair to them two that I did with, uh, sorry, to this one that I did with them two, and see what comes out in the wash. Uh, the speaker is um, just under 2,000 quid, so it's kind of worth making a, you know, a bit of an effort on, really. So I'm going to give it some time, hopefully it will come to life. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, apart from that, they're not very serviceable. They're always, it's basically a sealed unit, but the parts that I want to get to are quite exposed, so I can hopefully um, that will bring it back to life. Let's see. So as you can see, the, the, uh, there's a, on the LCD display, there's, um, the input has shown as being present. Uh, but we have no output whatsoever. Well, let's just get to work and remove the uh, the module from the uh, the base bin. Just need to undo these um, Torx uh, screws using the T20 or Torx 20 size uh, driver. So I've got a real dislike for these powered speakers. I know, yes, they're very convenient, but uh, you can't expect electronics to survive very long in an unvented, uh, uncalled uh, cabinet. They just don't last very long. Uh, oops, let's pick the, pick the driver up, shall we? <coughs> uh, yeah. So she's just shy of £2,000 worth of kit here. Um, is it worth it? Well, not, in, not in my opinion, it's not. <laughs> People seem to like them for their convenience. But from a service point of view, they are pretty awful to work on most of the time. So we've got about like, one, two, four, five, a dozen or whatever. So screws to remove. Okay, right, now we've got the module on the, uh, the workbench and uh, set to work. Uh, the first thing that I tend to do is to apply some switch cleaner to the um, these uh, flat cable connectors. So we've got the wings either side, let's pull them to the left and right. It comes out, just by a bit of uh, Bit of uh, contact cleaner on there. Uh, this is um, non-conductive, so you can, in theory, spray on live equipment. But I don't recommend doing that. But you don't you normally have to. Do, you don't have to do it dry. But it's my opinion only. So don't take it literally. You may want to. May want to let it dry. So I'm paste that back in there. Lunch is just here. I don't oh. know if you've got yours yet. No, not yet. Thanks, Ben. No worries. Lunch is about to arrive, so it's this quick. That's that one done. There is another flat connector here. Same applies, pull the wings to the side, left and right. Pops out. Try some contact switch cleaner. Push the connector back in. Wings clip back in. Uh, now the next job now is to do the, um, the re-soldering, which is the kind of tricky part. <clears throat> Got to be sold the um, the connections to the uh, the multi pin connector. So we'll start with uh, this one here. And just apply some conservative conservative amount of solder on, on each pin. Just pin them right along. Don't make sure we can 
if it will need the video or not. Hopefully. It's a case of a little, a little dab will do you. I don't want a lot of salt on that. All right along. That's it. And for the for the tricky part, or trickier. Is uh, this this one here <coughs> again? Just just very quickly solder it. To be honest, I'm not really sure what actually where the issue lies. Whether it is these, the, you know, the contacts <coughs> on these connectors or the um, the soldering. But I just hit it on both angles, if you like. Um, so far it's provided a, a, long, a lasting cure. Right the way along. Oh, oh thanks, cheers. Okay. Well, I just survived. I think. Let's get this job done first. It was a beer with tea. It smells lovely. Right the way along, and so on, and whatever. And so on, just carry on working away there. Uh, and the really fiddly part, if you like, is doing the connections. I think you can see this. Underneath here. Can't still be able to see this one. Right oh, it's not going to work, is it? Wake right? up, Gordon. Sorry, I'm not awake. Uh, yeah, so, um, it's, you know, basically, uh, Connections and leave the board here. There's two lots of them. Just you know, it's fiddly, but it, it can be done. Just to take your time. And that's really it. It's just a matter now of um, double checking your work, make sure there's no short circuits on the uh, the joints where you've soldered, and to put the uh, the, ma the uh, module back into the um, into the base bin. Cross your fingers. Okay, well, that's uh, lunch uh, done and dusted, and very nice it was too. Uh, back into the to the job in hand now. Uh, we fit in the um, module back into the uh, the cabinet. So naturally, it's the reverse of what we done earlier on. Offer the module in like that. We can see we fit the connectors, speaker connectors. One. So, let me lift up and just to re locate quite tight this one, this connector. But, um, sorry, I just dropped the bloody phone still. Uh, where are we? We're up here, aren't we? God, this is rubbish. Sorry about this. That goes back into there and it's bloody tight. Get it in there. Little click, visual click, and it's back in. The module. Make sure it's in proper in place. And just put the, the screws back in. Um, I'm not going to put all the screws back in because that's the um, the kiss of death if we do that. But it would not work. Sods all over tick tight. So I'm going to. Sorry about this crap film in here. So just, just get one screw in so the module will support itself. So that's it. I'm just going to put a couple of screws in for each diagonal just to hold the, uh, the module in place before um, running up and testing it and see if it's uh, if it's cured or not. Moment of truth is near. Let's put the phone down for a second while I put this on the floor. <clears throat> that's it, so that's it. So I'm just going to put the, um, reassemble the, uh, the speaker and run it up. So first we've got this post, it goes in 
No, it goes in that way. Push it in. And the next bit, the drivers. It clips in the top like that, and that's and that's it. That's all ready to test. Let's see what happens. Right, so that's the our sound source. Plug into input one. Good as any. See what we got, if anything. Try that again. So what have we got? Nothing at the moment. Uh, why is that? Let's turn that down a bit. Right, well it's, it's not this unit. That's working fine, I know it for a fact. It's the output from the, the PC. What's going on? Let's try to have the try to have a connector. The base, the sub is definitely not faulty anymore, he says. You have a healthy hum. And I'll plug the final connector in. What's, what's going on? Is it muted? Let me just put the uh, phone down for a second and see if we can find out what's going on here. Bit of troubleshooting. I'll unplug the output from the PC into the, my test speakers. There's nothing coming out. So what's going on there? I've got a feeling the connector's coming out of the back of the PC. Let me just check. I want to see. This is live TV, folks. <laughs> That is really weird. I'll be off sight now. Okay, well, it's. <laughs> Let's plug that back into the unit, the base bin. Because that base bin is definitely working now. Here we go. I don't know what wasn't working on the first track that I played. Um, 
but it wasn't the fault of the bass thing at all. It was the uh, the signal from the um from the PC. Let's try another track. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, what have we got? So I say reasonably normal. Unmistakable uh, popcorn. Um, it's um, I'm not kidding. I didn't intend that to be the piece to check music to check the um, the bass bit out. I was sort of struggling just to find something after it failed to play. First of all, <coughs> it was just a random choice. Uh, come, so I don't want to miss the opportunity of um, just a quick um, background on the track popcorn. Um, it's originally. Um, on the album Mo uh, Music to Moog by, uh, composed by Gershon Kingsley in 1969. There's been literally hundreds, but thousands of cover versions of it. Um, the version heard here is by someone called Robert Pep, and I've never heard of him before, and I don't think he's particularly well known. Um, and he performed uh, Popcorn in Toronto on a Yamaha SY77 digital workstation, that's easy for me to say. Uh, so yeah, he done it all on the Yam, nothing, nothing else. Um, 
I think it's a great version. Uh, it really jumps out, literally. Really, the orchestra, orchestra hits at the beginning of it. It really jumps out. But, so I just couldn't um, let this opportunity pass about mentioning a bit of background about the track. Anything to do with motor synthesizers, mate. And I'm, I'm in, it, in it like Flint. So I also um, failed to mention the um, the uh, hit version of um, uh, Pop uh, Popcorn was by um, the name of the source, um, Hot Butter. I think a guy called Stan Free, I think his name is, the keyboardist. Uh, he, he, he was basically mostly involved with that. Um, that was a hit in 1972, top, possibly top 10 here, I'm not sure, I'm not, certainly top 20 here. Um, anyway, so I think it's only fair that we hear the, uh, the, the, the full version of, um, not Hot Butter's version, but Robert Papp's version. And to my, to my, to my reckon, the best version. God, it's been a long day today, I need to go home. <laughs>